We're live. What is going on, everybody? Friends, how are we doing? It's I, Drake Riggs, here for just a random little hangout, a little live QA session. I know it says live MMA QA, but you know, with these, if you've been here before, and I know it's been a while, we're just hanging out. We can talk about absolutely anything. I'm thinking maybe. An hour tops. We're not going over the hour mark today. Just kind of uh, felt like, you know, hanging out for a little bit. And let me make sure I got the music going. So our vibe check is all checked out. There we go. Sounds good. Not going to wear the headphones if I don't need to, even though I do like the music. So, yeah. Happy. What is it? Tuesday, everybody. How are we doing? Good. Hopefully it is August 22nd. A lot going on in the MA world in general, in the just the world overall. Um, so yeah, how are things? We got Ghost I'm here. Way great to see you live again. Yes, great to be live. I don't know what it is, but it is a great day to be alive. That's the spirit, Ghost. I I love that kind of message. You know me, Synchro. Good to see you, my man. Amazing Drake is back. Great to see you. Love to hang out with you. Appreciate it. So glad that you're here. So glad that you're here, man. And uh, hopefully whoever else uh, joins on in, we appreciate you as well. But even if you don't, that's okay. We're just hanging out regardless. So feel free, of course, to get your questions in throughout the show. It is driven by you in these cases as we're hanging out. But before we do really get into things uh, and you guys think about what you want to talk about, again, doesn't have to be MMA only. I only put that in the thumbnail just uh, because, of course, MMA is kind of uh, the center of things in life <laughs> when it comes to me, I guess. that It is big part of my life obviously but uh we can talk about absolutely anything that's why it's just a hangout q a whatever you want to call it but i did want to talk about uh give some updates i guess before we got into things so as you guys know if you are reoccurring viewers or know me personally at all uh my internet connection has been bad <laughs> pretty much since my career began no it has since it began i've been having shitty wi-fi at home for my entire life pretty much <laughs> especially as an adult but uh that is changing uh should be this week getting some new wi-fi uh good faster speeds uh getting that starlink from uh, old elon who not a big fan of him these days because of what he's done to twitter but other than that hopefully this helps things out a lot and with new better wi-fi that will allow me to be a lot more flexible and do a lot more video types of content and just little uploads and whatnot because it takes just so long to do really anything um for me when at home which is a real bummer but we've made it work pretty damn well and the connection's holding up right now so far with a knock on the wall here with the current old one but the idea with the new wi-fi is that allow me to uh get on the gaming streaming a bit more so i can do more live stuff i did the pokemon ones recently just because they're easy and small through emulators. But uh, I can do real games, real big games, uh, current modern day stuff with that. So that is uh, what I'll be doing on the channel, assuming everything works out as expected. So that is a little update for you guys in regards to uh, me being live a bit more. So I wanted to mention that. Um, and in terms of things coming up, let's just get that out of the way. I will be in Jacksonville at the start of September for the Game Bread event. So you can look forward to coverage from me there. Uh, Junior Dos Santos, Fabricio Verdum rematch with no gloves in MMA. That'll be interesting. And then the week after, I will be in Las Vegas for Alexa Grasso versus Valentina Shevchenko 2 covering for MMA Mania. Of course, follow us on all the platforms as you can see right down there. That'll be a fun event. Uh, Noche UFC, as they're calling it, the big Mexican Independence Day. Should be pretty crazy in Vegas for that, I would assume. So I'm excited to get back to Vegas for, I believe it'll be the first time I've been in Vegas since UFC 269, December 2021. It has been quite a crazy time since then. So yeah, that'll, uh, that'll be fun. And then, of course, Broad Horizon episode 30, the big 30, is going to be coming out next week <laughs> next week is the plan yes not a no concrete date yet as we are still working on final guests here uh, as we always like to go big for every 10th episode look forward to that on mamania.com of course 
uh, Brun Horizon episode 30. Good one there. As uh, I gave a spoiler alert, Megumi Fuji is on it. And if you guys haven't noticed the pattern, she is on every 10th episode. Gotta bring back the Kelly. Big episode. And, uh, we got four for that. In terms of shows, and I wanted to address this as well for uh, you guys, especially those of you who are here. We saw Ghost and Synchro. I can't, I'm not looking at the comments right now, so I see we have some. I don't know who all is here, but I appreciate you, whoever is here. And if you are, you know, somebody who has followed my shows and whatnot, I wanted to talk about WMA Mania really quickly here because obviously that was a bit of an abrupt ending back in was that april march it's been a couple months it's been a couple months since wm mania um unintentionally died <laughs> i just wanted to let you guys know especially you know the fans and followers who join me every single week i appreciate you oh so much but i just wanted to say i'd let you know why and what happened to an extent without going really super into detail about it but that wasn't the plan i was not planning to completely stop wm mania and was always planning on re-getting it rebooting it getting it back up i uh, just needed a little bit of a break at that time as I was going through some personal uh issues that were just very kind of traumatic and hard to deal with at the time and you know to be open without again too much detail as i'm an honest person positive person uh yeah thought that my relationship was ending at that time so it was kind of a very tough thing to get through in those moments so i just needed to focus on the personal health and whatnot and just couldn't really uh build it back up after that just with all the things that were going on um build back up i guess the ability to keep the show going um so here we are unfortunately i <laughs> kind of cost uh w mania a little bit of a shorter life than i wanted to and at this point i don't think it's going to be coming back uh planning to do another show but not going to be exactly the same but did want to just let you guys know about that so you can look forward to the new show uh probably i think we're gonna start it uh in vegas um that would be fun so look forward to that but moral of that story is uh that's behind me now all of that is over <laughs> so the relationship is over um not a funny thing i shouldn't be laughing about it but moral of the story is uh the truth will set you free, you guys. And this is something very important to me that I want to say. As you know, I'm always a preacher of positivity. If you do know me, no need to be mean to people because you never, you never, ever know what somebody is going through, right? So no need to be a dickhead for no reason to somebody because they could be going through something absolutely awful and life-changing and trust me <laughs> speaking from experience not that i had people being mean to me or anything but just remember there there's no reason to be an asshole for no reason especially so spread positivity whenever you can you guys that is always the big message i like to spread and share but again free flourishing all good to go big things coming in the future very excited a lot of ideas in mind and a lot of focus putting back where it deserves to be put so now i'm fired up i wasn't expected to get all in my feels here but now we're going <laughs> so <laughs> let's see what do we got you guys good to oh we got the whole crew is here now i'm gonna cry now i'm gonna cry i didn't expect this so uh, makoto my goodness uh how are you doing uh, consensus the cma i'm assuming that means china social media wants whaley to fight suarez chinese fans really don't want down on to fight whaley since they know that she would lose bad and want suarez because it will push whaley to new levels thoughts on that um i think i agree actually and you guys know me obviously the the main crew here um yan jaunan one of my absolute favorite fighters adore her i mean 
So is Whaley. So that's that's another one of those bittersweet matchups. I have so many straw weights that I really like. And I do like Tatiana as well. I wouldn't say she's a favorite of mine, but I always love me a good strong wrestler. That is for sure. Um, but here, let's kind of look back at this. Chinese fans don't want Zhao Nan because it would be uh, easy for Wei Li. Want Suarez will push Wei Li to new levels. I mean, it's kind of hard not to agree with that. Uh, Tatiana is a much more difficult stylistic matchup, I think, for Wei Li, and that was proven tenfold by both of their last performances, <laughs> specifically this last weekend uh with whaley's win like i think that jaunan would definitely do better than lemos did um maybe not by a whole lot as much as that hurts me to say but because whaley's wrestling has just gotten so ridiculous but i feel like lemos's takedown defense was a lot worse just in general than we're used to seeing so you could contribute that to whaley as well but um i mean of course you can but I just, I don't know. I think that Zhao Nan's uh, takedown defense has maybe gotten a little bit better, comparatively speaking. So I think that Zhao Nan would do a slightly bit better there. But yeah, for sure, Tatiana is the tougher matchup at this point. I think that is fair to say. I uh, hope we see both matchups still, uh, especially Zhao Nan and Whaley in China. That's just, a, that's the thing we've been talking about for so long. We need that. You can't miss out on that. So, yeah. Ghost asks, uh, how did you like my thread? Uh, Whaley's blessing to release that. Yeah, very awesome that she allowed you to. I was very surprised to see <laughs> that you uh, that you did that because I know it's top secret information, uh, the blueprints there. But um, I didn't get to check out the entire thing, Ghost, because it was a, a big one. You really went to town there, which uh, is awesome. You know, kind of old school fan and punch breakdown style. So I still have to check out the entire thing, man. But uh, yeah, it looked very cool from... Uh, the tweets that I did see. So I didn't get to see every single one was kind of jumping around in there, but uh, yeah, it looked very awesome. Russell J, what is up, sir? How you doing? Uh, hey, Drake, excited for Josephine tonight. Yeah, I love Josephine Knudsen. I think she's great. I think she should probably be in the UFC already. I mean, her last two wins, very good ones, and she's taking on Isis Rubik tonight, right? So uh, Rubik, a very good striker. Uh, uh, kind of interesting that, well, what? Josephine fought on road. She fought on road to UFC. Is, uh, this isn't her second contender series fight, is it? Right. But it's funny for her to go to both of these things, <laughs> to be on both of these UFC platforms without being in the UFC. But uh, I think she's definitely the more well-rounded fighter than Verbeek. So yeah, I'm excited to see Josephine. I think she's great. And uh, shameless plug. I have spoken to her. I spoke to her before her last fight, so you can check that out on MMA Mania's uh, YouTube channel. So I will have to catch up with her again, especially if she uh, wins tonight. So looking forward to that one indeed. Jimmy, my man, how are you doing? Glad to see you back. Glad to see you. What is your opinion on Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? All my favorite shows have been gone. Like Dan, Tom, and your show. Just happy to talk with you again. Man, that makes me sad, Jimmy. I'm sorry, man. I, I gave an explanation, though. I, I'm sure that you were listening at the beginning, so I apologize. But... Uh, it was just too tough for me to continue with the show at the time. But again, we're getting back in the rhythm of things now. i uh, going to try to be live with a lot more things, video game stuff, like I said. And then just uh, another new show over at MMA Mania uh, that will be coming soon. Um, but yeah, you know, I love doing this and I love talking to you guys. Just kind of been a matter of sorting out my own life really because it uh felt falling apart a little bit there it's been a rough year it's been a very 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 rough year uh worst year of my life probably but that's okay we're uh turning that around so tears of the kingdom though i haven't played it yet jimmy i really want to i i wanted to play breath of the wild i wanted to get around to that one but have not yet i love the zelda games i think my favorite all time definitely i mean it's the early ones are kind of hard to go against, but Twilight Princess, I thought was just so insane. It was so goddamn good. I love kind of the the most realistic, I mean, graphically, I guess, you know, it was the most like stunning visual, visually stunning game uh, in the Zelda series. But I don't know, that one was just awesome too. It was kind of, it was the first like really big, well, Wind Waker was open world two, if I remember. I didn't play that one in full. I never owned it, but I played it a little bit like friends' houses, friends' houses and stuff. But Twilight Princess for me is the goat in terms of Zelda. I know Breath of the Wild's amazing. 
from what I've heard. And then Tears of the Kingdom is like that, except better. So it's like, holy shit. Um, but yeah, I it sounds great. I can't really give a worthwhile opinion on it, having not played it. But I've heard there's like nothing bad to be said about it, it seems. And uh, one of my buddies, well, one of my, my best friend, uh, one of my best friends says that it's kind of like too big almost the world's almost too big <laughs> so that sounds like the only complaint i've heard about it but yeah I, I i'm sure that it's amazing and i would love to i will try to get around to it at some point i just got the new pokemon as i said i was going to on uh, my past streams for crystal so i'm in the middle of uh, pokemon violet right now which you want to talk about big maps my goodness uh the paldea is massive and I'm still kind of scratching the surface just with the, the beginning here and getting my first gym badge I just got what last yesterday. So that's keeping me busy right now. And then um, I'm about to get the new Madden and play that with my friends in franchise mode. So I'm going to be occupied with games for a good bit uh, just with those two. My goodness. His rain says, Chuck already making excuses to why Lemo sucked, even though he picked her to win. Do you think we can say that if you pick against Whaley, you are a big you know, just a rose stand? No, I'm never going to say that's fair uh, unless there's evidence and proof to that. Rain, come on now. Um, but if you're going to mention Chuck making excuses, at least what are they? Let's let's know what they are. You know that I, I have no problems with Chuck, even though, of course, we don't agree on things all the time that's a healthy not to agree on everything so you can avoid echo chambers and whatnot but what are the excuses let me know uh what exactly he's saying there so i don't know how many i don't know if you can really make excuses i honestly thought just touching on that um i it's that first that first choke that lemos locked on i was getting a little worried there i was like oh my goodness she's about to pull this off but then the uh, friend I was watching it with, he was like, well, she's not turning purple or anything. So it was kind of crazy. I don't know how Whaley was breathing through that. Maybe just the angle or whatnot. It looks pretty tight, though. Looked pretty tight. Uh, James, what is up? Game Bread Event. Can you ask him his opinion on Whaley? They met at UFC 291. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Always open to, uh, yeah, asking whatever. So I will definitely get a hold of Mr. Masvidal when I'm down there. Rio, Drake, he's such a cool man. Too kind. Really too kind. Appreciate that, sir. You're the cool man. You got a shout out on that Whaley scouting report on X. Do you feel like you helped Whaley with the dominant performance? Oh, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. But I appreciate I appreciate the, uh, the shout from Ghost for sure. Um, no, no, no. I don't think I contributed whatsoever. But um, I mean, I guess indirectly in a way, Ghost will say that. So very kind of him. But um, I wouldn't say so. I don't I didn't feel, I've not felt that way at all. I haven't even thought about that until you said it right there. Uh, I will humbly say no. I, I think that's kind of crazy to say. But hey, if someone else wants to go ahead. <laughs> Synchro says, uh, whatever the reason of ending WM Mania, it's okay. I still love you and great to see you again. Appreciate it, Synchro. Love you too, sir. Yeah, it's uh, just bad timing, right? I don't know. It's When you do a weekly show like that, you gotta got to be ready for anything. So that sets on me. But it has been kind of refreshing and needed to have a little bit of a break from it. Um but I do miss it. I do miss it. And I think the my biggest bummer about all of that really is that and, and to humbly brag again, like not to toot my own horn, but only only show like that, right? There is not another show on YouTube, at least that I know of or with a platform worth a damn <laughs> that has done a show like that for the women. So Never going to say never that it's not going to ever come back again. But at the moment, um, not looking like it right now. Like I said, I've got some other things in the works. And that is I, not even close to the ideal way I would have wanted to end it just randomly. Like, I, I fucking hate that. I fucking hate that it was just like, oh, sorry. Last episode I did was when I was, uh, I don't remember where I was. San Jose? I was in a hotel room. I was looking at it a couple of weeks ago. I was like, God damn, really? Not even in the studio here. It, it just kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. So maybe I'll have to whip out episode 54, like 
next week just to go off <laughs> no because if i do that then it'll just reboot all the way so i don't know we'll figure something out um you know i, I love that idea of one of my my babies of course and to have had it uh shelved like this it, it does hurt it does hurt jimmy agree with synchro wania isn't as important as your personality even if we talk a few times it's fun well appreciate that so much jimmy i'm glad you you're understanding you guys and i know uh, i didn't get much like angry messages like where's the show or anything so uh, i didn't expect that but yeah makoto did you expect whaley to dominate like that she said in an interview that lemo she's ninja choke is something she wants to learn you know the choke that way was caught in yeah i mean the ninja choke's a sneaky one i, I mean it's they call it the ninja choke for a reason and uh kind of coming to prominence a bit this year i mean obviously may Rebueno silva got uh, her big one over holly holm who she tested positive uh she announced yesterday but uh did i expect to dominate like that no not at all i i thought that I tweeted it right before the fight that I thought Lemos was going to surprise people a little bit um, with how she was going to do. Let me make sure the music is still going too. Okay, just wanted to double check on that. Keep the vibes going. But um, no, I did not. I thought that Whaley would be pretty comfortably in control. I, I didn't think she was going to wrestle as much. That was uh, kind of my biggest surprise. I thought that it would be a lot more of a of a you know kickboxing match to an extent and it's it's insanely smart that Wei Li did approach the fight as she did because the i mean lemos clearly had little to no success those chokes just the two that she was well, she only cut her twice second one wasn't nearly as tight as the first one but uh she had moments when i want to say like the third round she caught Wei Li with a cup the right hand maybe like three times throughout the whole fight big shots so big chin on Whaley to survive those or take them because uh, some of them were pretty clean of course there were not a lot but man those will add up so very smart that she did not play around on the feet the way she did so um yeah good stuff James just uh happy you're okay great to have you back you can just look for a little while well hey man we're not going anywhere permanently so uh like I said want to do more of these hangouts more regularly and going to be mostly hoping to have them centered around games and whatnot that'll be more at night time my time pacific time because after work hours but um of course we can try and squeeze these in at these hours too but yes i, I want to be doing more uh live streaming going forward so look forward to that you guys and james is by the way ghost great you on x with that scouting report yep i got that tag for sure appreciate it very much uh, Rio, were you a Yu-Gi-Oh fan? I sure was. Didn't really watch much of the show, but loved the cards. I think the card game, the Yu-Gi-Oh card game was so much more fun than Pokemon for me. Um, even though I'm a much bigger, like significantly larger Pokemon fan overall. Um, the Yu-Gi-Oh card game was so fucking great. Like, I don't know. I can't even remember like what the big differences about it were, but I loved playing the Yu-Gi-Oh card game usually it was like only playing my brother because a lot of, I didn't know a lot of other kids who had uh who had Yu-Gi-Oh cards or at least enough for like solid teams or to play and whatnot but uh yeah no I absolutely loved playing uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh card game as a kid it was it's so great like I'm sure I could easily get back into that too if I wanted to right now but I don't even know if that stuff is still going I'm sure you can find places for it but yeah Yu-Gi-Oh is uh, awesome really enjoyed did you know that the mma term shadow realm actually comes from the four kids censorship of death in the anime in uh in Yu-Gi-Oh, the shadow realm sound and from the four kids censorship of death no you're confusing me they're like I, I watched the anime a little bit a little bit um yeah very very vaguely can remember like memories from that of course it just you see the meme all the time now of uh what yugi's like it should have been me <laughs> <It's just laughs> fantastic um which i don't even remember seeing that part in the show uh, when i did watch it but um i don't remember the shadow realm from the show ghost says yeah we have been preparing that since december right on very cool oh synchro hitting me with a big one big question here which uh somebody asked me a uh, shout out to anonymous on my live streams for pokemon crystal a couple of weeks back what about a month ago now i suppose favorite pokemon ever ever 
I'm, I'm glad he actually asked me this before so that I could get it in mind and I'm not thinking on the spot here now, but I think honestly, it's probably got to be, probably got to be Salamence and just the Salamence, Salamence's evolution, you know, from Bagon to Shelgon. I love all three of those. I always loved the dragon types growing up, of course, Drake, you gotta, you gotta like the dragons, right? But no, uh, <laughs> yeah, Salamence is just, the, it's just awesome. Just the, the perfect, the perfect dragon. Um, I think it's probably him. I've always loved Tyranitar and his, his, uh, evolution as well. Larvitar, um, uh, Blanket, Pupitar, yeah, Pupitar and then, uh, Tyranitar. Those are great ones. I really love Groudon, you know, as a legendary. Um, yeah, lots to choose from. Lots to choose from, but I think uh, those are the, the the two evolutions at least that come right to mind. Oh, when you're asking game, not just Pokemon. <laughs> well, all right, I should have read that first. But uh, the fav my favorite game in that regard is it's got. I think Emerald is is the greatest Pokemon game of ever, of all time very very good just it was like it had everything everything you could ask for really especially at that time period um i all and i really loved gen 2 specifically for the fact that it had kanto and johto in it which is why i was so excited to play crystal again even though i failed my nuzlocke and i didn't even get to kanto i lost in uh, against, I think Bruno is who beat me in the um, Elite Four. So did pretty good, <laughs> did pretty good, but uh, couldn't quite get through there. Very tough. I mean, that's a tough game to Nuzlocke when you have two regions to get through. So uh, I started out hot for my first one. I'll have to get back on another one. So I'll have to get a, an Emerald Nuzlocke here one of these days for sure. But um, I think Emerald is probably the go for me. It's the one, Gen 3 is the gen that I've put the most hours into, bar none, like easily just massively addicted to um emerald as a kid when that came out so yeah it's got to be that one um even though I, ha I do really like the last two i'm enjoying the current one right now violet and gen 9 a lot even though i'm still super early into it i think it's really cool arceus was amazing that was uh great i wish there was more kind of focus on battling more of a focus not like entirely but Arceus is like that's how Pokemon games should be going forward and I'm a little upset that some of the elements of it are gone from Violet but yeah a lot of options to choose from of course um, and I know a lot of people like Pokemon Stadium and some of those ones Pokemon Snap just chilling out there's Pokemon Sleep now I don't even know what that is <laughs> but yeah Makoto says, and speaking of video games, I got my, you can't see here, let me switch my camera. I got my, uh, I think some of you guys will like this. I got my Pip-Boy shirt on today. As you can see here, whipped this bad boy out. Haven't, uh, haven't rocked this in a while, but sighed in the closet. was like, why not? <laughs> Fallout, I'm very excited for Starfield. Dude, that's another game. That's coming out like next week, isn't it? Two weeks? That'll be when I'm in Jacksonville. I really want to get on Starfield too when that happens. Uh, Makoto says he also thinks Tatiana Suarez should fight for the title next just because we know Whaley will do her best in that. If she fights down on Whaley, wouldn't really improve right opinion on that. No, I think I think I think everybody in to some degree, of course, improves with every fight and every win. As you would hope. Uh, but if somebody like Whaley, we know she's always trying to improve and really approaches fights specifically for her opponents um i think she would she would improve from it for sure maybe not as much right because again the tougher the challenge the the more you're gonna learn and improve from it so a bit of a mix i guess there uh rio says or asks how crazy is that ghost who is some random dude on the internet can be part of whaley's camp and have such an impact on a title fight it's crazy how it all started in wma today it is crazy but at the same time i think we should give ghost a little bit more credit he's not just some random dude on the internet i think he's got some secrets up his sleeve we might not uh know about or as much as he leads on so uh but yeah it is uh it is kind of crazy that things things came to the forefront a little bit uh here with everybody, right? I'm not going to say with me, but with all of us back in the WMA today days. 
man, insane. Insane. Steve and I started that show in like 2017, 18 maybe, around there. What a run. What a run. And that makes me even more upset about <laughs> things uh, unintentionally ended. For the time being, we're going we're gonna to keep that on there. The door's never closed. Synchro says, if you could design a game, would you design Pokemon to be like Tears of the Kingdom? So how do you mean by that, Synchro? Because again, since I haven't played it, I don't know what exactly you mean by that, like the, the world, because the really cool thing about Gen 9, this current one, is that it's it's like uh, the most open worldy game that they've done so far. So like you don't have to stick to a certain path right like you know how in pokemon games you kind of go through the gyms one through eight all in order some of them you can skip around but in this one you can literally go wherever you want you're gonna get fucked up by the tougher stuff if you try to go there right away but if you want to try you have that option so it's completely open like that like you don't even have to battle the gyms i don't think if you I mean, I'm sure to beat the game, you probably have to, but it's like you have they're more mission style, like they're quest style, I should say. Whereas like, oh, you can go do this if you want. So there's no order to things. So if that's what you mean, they uh, are already doing it. But my perfect Pokemon game, which is never, ever going to happen, at least I doubt my dream is for a game to have every single region in it, <laughs> every single Pokemon, because there's never been a game, well, except for like the first ones, right, that has every single Pokemon in it. And we've never had, so I guess Gen Gen 2 is the last one that did that, had every Pokemon in it and every, probably not even then with considering legendaries and stuff. But I want one with everything. Game would be massive. It would be huge, <laughs> but that's my dream. If I was to design one, we have all, is it? It would be nine regions, right? In total, all nine of them in one game pack. You can go everywhere. It would be, be way too big, but <laughs> that's my perfect. Like you would just never, you would never be done with that game, especially as, as there's like a thousand Pokemon now. Uh, Jimmy says, speaking of Pokemon, do you like Pokemon speed runs? I think that I, I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't say I like them or dislike them. I haven't like watched one before. I always think that that kind of stuff is insanely impressive to be able to do it. And of course, it's a lot of just getting the patterns down and whatnot. But uh, like for Crystal, I tried to get through it as not as fast as I could, but I didn't want to be slow with it, if that makes sense. So. Um, I've, that's like the closest I've gotten to doing one. Uh, I would never do that with like a new game cause I want to enjoy it and all that stuff. But I, I think it's impressive. I wouldn't say I like or dislike them. Uh, not for me personally to do <laughs> like, I mean, again, maybe with a game that I have played a whole bunch. Like if I was to go through Emerald and Emerald again and just try and blaze through that perhaps, but uh rain says chuck said lemos came unprepared and unmotivated well, i don't know i'm curious then what the what the signs or evidence of lack of preparation would be but unmotivated i disagree with that i thought i actually thought like during fight week i thought lemos looked very locked in and like even at their first face off at the press conference i thought whaley looked like she backed down a little bit to be honest like Lemos looked locked in, focused, and very confident. So I would not at all say she was unmotivated. I disagree with that. Underprepared. I I mean, I guess you could say that, what, because she got taken down as much as she did? I, I don't know. I don't know what the logic behind that one is. But unmotivated, I completely disagree with. I thought she actually looked more motivated and confident than Wei Li, to be honest. And then... On fight night, I think it was probably about equally. I thought Whaley looked even kind of nervous on her walkout, but when she got in the in the octagon, it was kind of fine. So, of course, that's all just, you know, mental speculation bullshit that really nobody knows the answer to. So it's it's always dumb, but that's that's how I <laughs> how I viewed it. Obviously, it was didn't matter. Uh, Jimmy says, did that ninja choke remind you of Volk escaping Ortega? Then, wait, his first reaction after escape was to take the back and land bombs. 
that was such a crazy sequence, man. There were some wonderful, wonderful uh, grappling scrambles just on the card. That Holaba win, I I loved that triangle. I don't know how the man didn't get the bonus. Fight uh, the performance of the night. Goddamn, he got robbed. Kurt Holaba, shout out to him. But um, no, it didn't remind me very much of Volk and Ortega. Um, I mean, I guess they were similar, obviously, with super tight choke seating escape. But I think Volkanovski was in more trouble, and he even admitted that. Uh. But yeah, I guess there's some similarities there. But yeah, Whaley's escape and then immediately almost winning after that. Nasty. Very nasty. Just dominance. Beautiful. Beautiful performance from the champ. Mugura says, what do you think of fighters inviting random guys on the internet to help them in training camps? <laughs> um, I don't think it's very helpful if they're random guys. I mean, of course, we've seen the trolls get invited to get beat up lately. Uh, shout out to Natan Levy who did that. Uh, what was that last week? But it wasn't helping him for training camp. <laughs> I don't know how much help you can get out of those kind of situations. Ghost says, do you think Whaley's performance can win game plan of the year? She wasn't nominated for the MA Worlds, which is funny. Um, are you talking about the um, the World MA Awards, Ghost? Because I don't, they don't do game plan of the year as a category, right? And then... She has she has to be a nominee for fighter of the year, right? I I so I love the MA the World MA Awards for the show and what it is, but I I hate their voting like their time period of being between what J July and June. Like what the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't know why they do it that way. Drives me insane, and really kind of makes the award show pointless in my opinion. But I love the celebration and everything the spectacle of it like they do a very good job with what it is and the shows are super fun to go to and i'm actually going to try to get to uh get to that one this year because they're so worth it like just not even from a work perspective but like just to go there and like see it they're they're awesome so i i would uh, i don't know if they're open to the public obviously i don't think so <laughs> but if you can if anybody can somehow get invites to go to those or be a plus one definitely try and check out an ma awards show uh the world ma awards at some point if you if you somehow can maybe i can invite you we can sneak you in uh makoto says whaley said all her opponents are her teachers and likes to steal techniques from them can she steal lemosh's power um well i don't know that's always a tricky debate right if power can be taught i mean strength can be gained I don't know if you can teach power necessarily. And I mean, Whaley hits very hard, as is. And of course, it's about throwing the proper technique to generate said power, right? So I don't know. I think that's a tricky one with power specifically. Um, and I mean, Whaley's very powerful already. So I don't know if she even needs to steal that one. But yeah. Go says, what's your opinion on Syndicate MMA as a gym? So we kind of talked about this already in the DMs, Go. So you're leading me here down uh, this path here. Um, Syndicate. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of, it's gone through some waves, some waves at the moment. Uh, of course, we had the heyday kind of a while back where all there, there were all the female fighters who were super good. But I feel like a lot of people have kind of left or disappeared. But I... I have nothing wrong with syndicate personally or any issues or like i told you i think john wood you know solid coach nothing uh nothing really bad to say about him um but yeah i think syndicates maybe just going through a rough patch the fighters but um yeah it's it's been one of the more underrated gyms for the last so many years um jimmy says i love games when you play hitman have you ever tried objective tried objective only instead of shooting up everything love this question jimmy and i'm glad you mentioned hitman as i'm getting messages here sorry about that guys didn't turn off my phone volume today <laughs> if you can hear that but uh speaking of hitman yes i will try to do live streams for hitman too god damn it i'm just gonna sorry let me turn the volume off here getting spammed um, gonna do Hitman live streams as well for the gaming because I didn't get to do any of those when I was playing uh, my last playthroughs. 
But uh, when I play, have I ever tried objective only instead of shooting up everything? 100%. That is how I pretty much went through my entire... I just played every single game, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> I played the whole franchise just a couple months ago to get through, uh, get to the latest game. And um, I think I only... I did it to where if I like fucked up, I just had to roll with it and I wouldn't restart. And there was only, I think, one or two times where I had to just just destroy everybody but uh <laughs> i typically don't like to do that. it's kind of mood dependent maybe like 10 percent of the time i'll go for just like chaos but i generally don't like to do that <laughs> i like to be a little bit more creative fun with it uh rio says shadow realm is from Oh, it's just funny that ma has adopted yeah that is funny oh benny bane boy davis here in the flesh even though he's in new york what is up my friend favorite condiment mustard hands down end of story no question about it i'm a mustard boy <laughs> such a mustard boy that um i lost a challenge once uh, and i had to snort mustard and it was incredibly painful it felt like a drill going through my brain and was probably not smart or a healthy thing for my sinuses and it's kind of plugged up for a couple days after that but that's how much i love mustard <laughs> so yeah synchro says what's the best hitman game and do you like the angry chef ram gordon ramsay yeah gordon ramsay's a very funny guy <laughs> i enjoy his honesty greatly um he gets very upset about kind of stupid things i think but that makes him entertaining and uh it's made him a lot of money but best hitman game Oof. Uh, I think that you can easily just flip a coin, toss up between, uh, uh, I think, man, best and favorite is kind of a different question here. Those are different questions, right? So best game. I mean, the, the last three, I think, are all really good. Really, really good. And I dare say hitman five that one might that one might be the best some of those missions are whew, they're crazy especially the hokkaido one um yeah yeah there's that's a tough one to go against best but i'm i'm very i'm very much uh, an original trilogy guy so the first three games i'm almost like take your pick between any of those silent assassin the first one, I might say that one you could also argue my personal favorites. It's any of those three, any of the first three contracts and blood money. Um, I might say contracts, even though blood money, I played the most for sure. Really mastered all those missions, except for maybe uh, the last one. Um, tough to pick. I guess I would go between the first three and five. <laughs> Not to say six and seven aren't good. But uh, it's definitely not Absolution. <laughs> it's not for Absolution. I know I forget who's a fan of that in the chat. Uh, one, of, one of the crew here, one of the boys. Absolution is his favorite. Might have been Rio. Um, or was it you, Synchro? One of you guys says Absolution is your favorite. So I'm sorry, but Absolution is... Man, that one did not age well for me. I really enjoyed it when it came out and played it a good... A lot, actually, um, around that time. But that was a tough one to replay. Like, I could not get through it. Ooh, Ben says, uh, or asks, most exciting upcoming one or Ryzen event. Love that one. Um, oh, well, let's get these Pokemon ones real quick. Garchomp, that, I really liked Garchomp as well. He was fucking OP savage as well. Gen 4 evolves from Gibble. Uh, one of my favorite names, well, Gibble is the first one. Gibble to, I don't remember what Gibble, Gibble evolved into. Gibble or Jibble, either way sounds funny, but Garchomp was a beast. I really did like him. One of my favorite Gen 4 Pokemon for sure. The Land Shark is what it was. It was fucking terrifying, honestly. But our most exciting event coming up between one or Ryzen. Um, well, we got Ryzen 44. I'm gonna pull this up right here because I off the top of my head actually I'm trying to think it's I know it's not finalized, I don't think. So let's see what we got on Ryzen 44. Just eight fights right now. That's the only Ryzen event on tap we got yeah okay ushiku versus hagiwara that's a fun one clever versus masanori kanehara that'll be fun. i mean i love all clever fights just love clever in general those are the big ones spy carlisle's back in uh, yoshinori orie that'll be fun yeah i mean rising uh, duffy's gonna <laughs> debut in rising at sudario that's kind of wild 
Um, yeah, I mean, nothing stands out too insanely in terms of name value on Rise of 44 just yet, but should be a fun card as always. So I think I'm actually going to have to go with One Fight Night 14. I'm really looking forward to that one a lot. One Fight Night 14, September 29th, back in Singapore. Don't know what's up with that. One has gotten away from Singapore for Thailand uh, in the past year, as you guys know. Of course, went to the U.S. in April. But uh, One Fight Night 14, Stamp versus Sohi Ham. I mean, one of my most anticipated fights of the year for sure, just because I fucking want Sohi Ham to get some goddamn respect in a title fight. That's all I really want. You know how passionate I am about that. So that one, uh, Panda's on that one against Wonder Girl. Um, some other good fights. What well, I think, would Lineker get added that one? One Fight Night 14 is looking really good. So I, I think that's the... The most exciting upcoming event at the moment. We'll see how Ryzen 44 continues to shape out. Just eight fights right now. Going to get some more on there. But uh, one fight, 914 takes it right now for sure. I think I'm a little behind here as we're catching up on some of these. Uh, Ghost says, do you hope that Whaley's next fight is in the U.S.? I do just because I can go meet up and camp again. But she probably wants China. Well, that's the thing, right? That is, it's 100% dependent on opponent because UFC will be just... They'll drop the ball entirely, which is nothing new for them. They've done it in several instances. But uh, you, if you do the Zhao Nan fight, you, it's gotta, you got to do it in China. If you can, right? Like, if that's possible, Dana's been mentioning it. That's what you got to do, right? If it's Tatiana, I mean, you still could. But Tatiana fight could be anywhere. Um, so, kind of depends. Kind of depends on who Whaley fights next. Fences Emerald was the first and still most favorite uh, Pokemon game. Yeah, so good, man. So good. It's just like, I don't know how you beat that one. It had, it had everything, everything you could ask for. Um, yeah. My first was uh, Pokemon Yellow. I got it for my fifth birthday. I'll never forget. My parents, I don't know why they gave it. This is at least the memory I have. They gave it to me in the car <laughs> with the, the Game Boy, the Yellow po Pikachu Edition one. Uh, so Pokemon Yellow was my first one. I was five years old. 2000. My goodness, it feels so long ago now. I mean, it was really aging myself there. But Pokemon Yellow was what I started with. Synchro says, is Nuzlocke hard? Yeah, uh, Nuzlocke Challenge is... I mean, I didn't think it was that hard, but again, I'm somebody who is a fucking total Pokemon nerd, so I didn't think it was that hard. It was kind of, it was more annoying at times than anything. Like, I want to say on my fourth, my fourth session, because it, I lost, I played, I played it for six two-hour sessions. I think I have the whole thing on my YouTube channel. If you guys want to watch my Nuzlocke I did in Pokemon Crystal, whole thing is here on my YouTube channel. Um... There was one point where like I became a water Pokemon trainer just because I had to. <laughs> like I had to go and just get water Pokemon because all my other ones died. So that's the thing. If you don't know what the Pokemon Nuzlocke challenge is, it is that you can only catch the first Pokemon you encounter in an area. Like the first time you go into an area or no, just yeah. So let's say you go into Viridian City and then you which is only like usually water stuff there, right? In ponds, because there's no grass and whatnot. Go catch something in the water or don't. If you don't get that first one, you can't get anything else there. And then when a Pokemon faints, it is dead and you got to get rid of it. Get rid of the carcass. Can't use it anymore. So, I mean, it is a challenge. That's the whole point of it. But uh, I thought it was really fun. It was, it was definitely a different kind of spin on the games. And there's a lot more different variations too. And that's a lot of challenges you can do, but... Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> you got the example you can see uh, here on the channel if you want. Hey, Zeus Hernandez, good to see you. How you doing? Who does uh, Blanchfield fight next, and does she win? Um, sub and hit the bell. Appreciate you, man. Cheers to you. Uh, well, uh, Aaron is fighting Tyler Santos on Saturday, <laughs> uh, and um, I think she'll win. Yeah, I'm on the I'm on the Aaron Blanchfield train. You guys know that if you know me since day one. I knew she'd be here. I called it. Her and Sayaka is one of my proudest brags. I will forever, ever uh, arrogantly brag about those two panning out the way that they have. But um, yeah, I, I'm at the point where I can't go against uh, Blanchfield now. I think the Santos fight will be very hard, but I got to go with her. She, she is the truth. Going to be a good one. Looking forward to that. 
the algorithm got you here. Well, that's awesome. You love to see YouTube helping us out. Ghost says, holy smoke, Drake Jackson just quoted my X thread. Right on. Good deal. Congrats, man. That's great. I know it's got a whole lot of uh, visibility. Let's you know that you're doing something right. I've seen your follower count has increased big time too, Ghost. You're getting hundreds uh, lined up there. So good job, man. Well deserved. Makoto says, it's still hard to request to interview Wei Li. This is the right time since you're doing a lot of interviews right, interviews right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've had no luck. I tried, I tried going in some pretty deep unique connection routes that only i have <laughs> for her before the fight and didn't work um i mean i guess I could try again but yeah she's just been she's been practically impossible to get a hold of help me out guys i know you got connections you know i'm here i'm here help me out if you can because <laughs> what i'm doing is not working <laughs> synchro is saying how it all started with pokemon punch uh but with the phantom punch she's pokemon in my brain uh do you miss it a little I do miss the Phantom Punch for sure. It was um, it was a lot of fun. My the only thing I don't miss about it is the extra editing that it, it gave me more work to do after the show. But it wasn't that bad. Like again, with better Wi-Fi, it would be much less of a problem. And like I said, that's getting fixed here soon. That's uh, hopefully any day now. But um, yeah, no, I think the Phantom Punch was super fun. It was a great time. And I loved uh, kind of the guesses that we would always uh, do for it. So, yeah, Phantom Punch was uh, pretty awesome. Chuck is here. What's up, dude? <laughs> you creeping? <laughs> uh, Synchro says, so Tears of the Kingdom like Pokemon as in not an RPG. Like when you send out a Pokemon, you can control it with the vehicles. Oh, so, yeah, you can send them out uh, in in the current Gen 2. You can, you can send them out in, what is it, the... The Gen 2 remakes, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, you can have them. They follow you, though. Your your lead Pokemon follows you the whole time. Um, you can send them out in this one. I don't remember if you could in Gen 8, Sword and Shield. But in this one, you can. They can follow you for a little bit. If they get far away from you, then they kind of snap back into the Pokeball. But um, yes, they. you can control them to an extent. You can tell them to like go attack the other Pokemon and stuff. But uh, probably a little bit different there. So, all right, guys, no fighting here, please. <laughs> As we're getting getting close to wrapping up here, about eight more minutes. We'll hit the full hour mark. We've already gone this far. So, uh, Rio says, I told Chris Presnell this, but Seika is always fighting scrubs that didn't deserve 2020 fighter of the year. Oh, well, you know, I don't agree with that. Uh, I think is always good, but beating up scrubs and not world-class talent needs to be stated. All right, Rio. Well, let's take a quick look here. Um, I think it is important, though, of course, to mention opposition and talent, of course. I think that's very important. But I think I mentioned this, too, when we did the award show. Um, and I'm curious what Chris actually said. Here, let me get this off the screen. It's covered in my face. But um, 2022, of course, last year. All right. So, obviously, the only two... So, she won four, four in a row. That was a big thing, right? Four fights. Um that was big. The amount of wins, the way she won. Uh, Anastasia Svetkivska and Laura Fontura, obviously not even top 15 fighters. I'm not going to deny that, right? They're not top 15 atom weights. Uh, great prospect, great prospects, right? And Seca did what she should have done against them. She submitted them both. Impressive fashion, especially that Fontura one. My goodness, that was that was one of my favorite performances of last year. Um but then in the same year, Rio, she beat Hamasaki, the GOAT, in one of Ghost's favorite fights. And, I mean, one of mine as well. The, the rematch was beautiful stuff. Uh, and then Siwu Park, which I know that was uh, that was a close one. A lot of people don't think Saka won, but she did get the win. A lot of the nominees every single year only have two wins. So you can get rid of even those two against Svetkivska and Fontura. And she still has the fun, she still has the Hamasaki and Siwu Park wins. Phenomenal stuff. Siwoo Park is the second best Adam White in the world right behind her. And then Hamasaki's the go-to at the time was number two as well. She's fallen since then because Park beat her. So you look at all these things around it. Just those two wins are all you need as well. But she got the extra two. Point still stands for me. <laughs> so wasn't fighting scrubs. Fought two, pro two good prospects who will be around for a bit, I think. Even though Fontour pregnant now, we'll see if she comes back after having the baby. But... Wouldn't say anybody scrubs either way, of course. 
competition level differences are there, but she still beat them all. Uh, Ghost says, no game plan of the year is something made up right, right? But that's a fun category, though. Uh, Rain says he hopes Hom gets starched against Sadamp. Oh my goodness, why? <laughs> I mean, I love, uh, I love, I love Stamp as well, but um, I'm all about that. Uh, that Hom, uh, respect, respect your legends. Um, Synchro says, do you remember your show with Dan Tom? I thought, in my humble opinion, it was really good. Well, I'm glad you thought so, Synchro. I, uh, yeah, of course, I thought it was great to get to do that with Dan. Um, and you know, would love, always love working with Dan. He's the best. So. That was fun. Yeah, of course. I didn't think, uh, I don't know. I felt like I was a little bit off that day, but glad either way. Getting to do it. Uh, Synchro, do you also like Hell's Kitchen? Never watched an episode, just little clips and highlights. Uh, I don't really like food shows that much. Um, but yeah, again, Gordon Ramsay is a fun guy. <laughs> Gillis says, ever look up the Pokemon Hex root editor? No, I don't know what that is. Uh, Jimmy says, it seemed like Whaley is universally beloved. She seems to have the best life and resources, and she, like she travels the world to learn cool things and play with elephants. Chris Presnell did a great job analyzing Whaley's training style. Awesome to hear. Chris, great guy. Um, I don't know. I feel like, obviously, Whaley's not universally beloved because we can see the trolls we get every now and then, and uh, just, especially if you look back, of course, during the Rose rivalry. Not so much there, but... Uh, I, th I personally, you guys know, I don't think there's any reason to dislike Whaley at all. Go says the Xiaonan fight will happen in China, Texas. China, Texas. Look it up. It's a real city in Texas. Okay. That's kind of funny. <laughs> all right. Rio, speaking of uh, Chris Presnell, will you ever be on his podcast? He's a really cool dude and has respectable opinions. Yeah, I like Chris. And um, yeah, we live in the same area. We could do that in person. If he wants to invite me, bring me on. Um, I... I would be glad to. He just, I'm not going to invite myself onto anything. So uh, if he wants to uh, get together for something, then we can make it happen. Makoto says, How angry would you be if Whaley tried to go to 125 to go for a second belt? Dana literally said they would let Whaley do whatever she wants. Um, I'd be fairly upset about that just because I think Flyweight's really stacking up now. We got a lot of options at Flyweight. We don't need Whaley to go up there right now. And especially she's got options too to defend the belt against. I I think we can hold off on that. Like if Whaley kind of clears things out, gets past it. Let's see where things are after Jaunan and Suarez. Then we'll we'll talk about that. And then obviously what happens with uh, everybody at Flyweight. Like too many moving parts right now. Oh big daddy's in the in the house. How are you doing, Mister? <laughs> he probably left us yeah that was from a couple of minutes ago as we're about to wrap up here. But uh, Rio says, I think the world of Saka is out, so I'm not being disrespectful. No, I didn't think you were necessarily, but four wins against not good fighters. Just want to discuss. We disagree, but we can still respect. Of course, we always can. But again, disagree with you there, Rio. You're you're saying that Hamasaki and uh, Park are not good fighters. That's just simply not true. Simply not true. I think, come on, man. Don't don't go there with them. Just those two. Like, sure, go ahead and say whatever you want about Svetkivska and uh, Fontour. Still pretty unproven, but Hamasaki... The GOAT, the legend, and then Siwa Park is uh, insanely good as well. And again, like I said, arguably, you make the case she beat her. Synchro says, should Zhao Nan fight Suarez? Um, no, I don't think that makes sense because they both deserve title shots and should fight Whaley. I saw, I, I think I was watching, um, somebody mentioned this. I was watching James Lynch's Q&A from today earlier, actually, right before I hopped on, got in the shower after working out. Um, said, uh, Whoever, between Zhao Nan and Suarez, whoever give one of them the title shot against Whaley and then the person who doesn't get it, fight Lemos. Perfect. That's perfect right there. And we got Dern versus Andraj. Makes perfect sense too. We should have got that one, I think, probably before uh, the last... Andraj's last two fights, maybe, but... That's just, it's just a whole different thing. So, <laughs> but all right, you guys, there we are. Perfect timing to wrap it up. I like how kind of things slowed down. It's like, you guys know you are respecting the time. How kind of you. <laughs> but uh, um, Sigro asks real quick before we get out of here, would Whaley versus Suarez be like Covington versus Usman? So like the first one where they just throw down the whole time instead of wrestling. <laughs> I mean, I, I struggle to see that a Tatiana Suarez fight going like that but I guess you never know so all right anyway there we are 
hitting the hour mark for a first live q a in a while yes we did the the game streams uh fairly recently but haven't done one of these where we're just hanging out chatting about stuff so i appreciate it so much all the regular faces i missed you guys it means a lot that you showed up here i wanted to give a decent bit of notice at least half an hour so i'm glad that you uh were able to make it and tune in so yeah like i said we're gonna try and do a bit more more regularly and uh do have a new show it's gonna be a live show as well um that is the plan in the works it's been in the works for a lot of this year so we're gonna get around to that sooner rather than later but until then we'll just be doing stuff sporadically here on the channel and um should have a vlog coming out soon which will be <laughs> fun uh, looking forward to sharing that and uh yeah like i said off the top ron horizon episode 30 gonna be releasing next week uh, actually little teaser i'm not i don't know if i should even say this but working on a, a massive interview right now um i've gotten some pretty big ones the last couple months actually if you've been keeping up but we might have a real big one here uh coming this week not official yet but We'll see. I have to check my emails. Maybe that's what I was getting notified about, but we'll see. We'll see. So stay tuned, you guys. Things are looking good. Appreciate all of you. Oh, so much. Oh, you're my favorite, mister. <laughs> Great chatting. Yes, Makoto. Thanks so much. Very cool. Will the new show be on Mania? Yes, of course. Uh, MA Mania show. That'll be where the new one will be. All the stuff, all my content, you can always find over on MMAnia.com. As you see down below, follow me at Drake Riggs underscore on Twitter and Instagram. The other platforms if you want i'm not even really caring about threads anymore <laughs> i'm on TikTok, kind of um but that's it i just joined blue sky which isn't even like fully open yet i don't know there's too much to keep up with just the two main big ones but uh yes everything on mma.com morning reports for ma fighting and then here with stuff i want to do on my personal channel so all right you guys until next time have a great rest of your Tuesday or Wednesday or Monday, wherever you are in the world. We'll see you next time. Remember to stay positive, everybody.